Hi, I'm Lou and today I'm going to show you how to fix almost every component of a gas furnace. First, turn off the power. Let's open it up and see what's inside. I'll take off the top cover, the bottom cover, and the burner cover. As you can see, there aren't that many parts and it's fairly easy to understand. Here are the burners, one, two, three, four, five, that work just like an outdoor grill, basically. This is the gas valve that turns on and off the gas that runs to the burner. This is an exhaust fan to make sure that all the burned gas gets blown out. This is a lid switch that won't let the unit run with the bottom lid off. In here is the blower motor that blows heat to the entire house. And right there is the controller board or brain that runs the whole thing. There's one more component hiding in here and it's a pressure switch to make sure that all the pressures are right for the furnace to operate safely. I've disabled the safety switch so we can see the furnace operating with all the lids off. So if we call for heat, the first thing that happens is the exhaust fan turns on and that'll run for about 30 seconds. Two things will happen next. One, there's a glow igniter in there that's going to glow red hot and this valve is going to kick on and blow gas across it which will ignite all the burners. As soon as the system has enough heat, the blower motor kicks on. And we're now heating the house. This is the exhaust fan. Here's an example of one that needs to be replaced. You'll see as I turn the unit on, it spins up quickly and then slows down. This is what it should sound like but you hear it slowing down, or maybe it might not work at all. In any case, this is running way too slow, and the furnace will not start. To take the motor out, make sure your power is off, and then you have to disconnect it electrically from the system. And you'll see these power wires are going down to this plug here, which goes through this metal plate. You're going to have to reach down below and pull the plug off the bottom, and then pull this piece out. And it's actually kind of hard to do it, and I wanted to show you how it works. So it's through the metal plate, and it looks like this. Okay, the metal plate's right in here. The part below is pretty easy. You just grab and squeeze, and then these two sides tabs open up, and the bottom comes out. This piece here is now stuck in the metal hole, and if you'll notice, this tab and this tab are flexible. So you have to wedge a screwdriver in there and push that in on both sides and then work this thing out of the metal. And here are the new motor wires that are supposed to go in this connector. These are actually pins that replace those pins in there. So these wires have to come out and be replaced by these two wires which eventually go off to the new motor. These pins you'll notice are barbed so when you push them down in the holes they lock in which is great for getting them in but getting them out is kind of a pain. The best way I've found is to actually cut them off right at the end, use a small screwdriver to dig in and pull out the insulation. Now I use a screwdriver to push all the metal into as small of an area as possible and then push the whole pin through and out the other side. You can see it sticking out there. Just grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it out. Now use the screwdriver to clean out any debris that's still left in the holes from the back side and push the new motor wires into the connector. Press in until they click in place. Make sure you observe the order before you take it apart in the first place, but it's probably white, black, white, black like mine. Then you're ready to snap this piece back in and take the plug from underneath and plug it back in. And unbolt the motor. And then pull the motor out. Here's the old and the new fan side by side. 
on the new one, these little washers come. You put them on here and here. If your old motor has a restrictor plate like this, you need to pull it off and bring it over here and put it on the new motor. And mine actually wasn't on the motor. I found it fallen into the furnace, so it must have broken off at some point. But anyway, you put it here, and then you give you these three little push pins to push in and hold it in place. My old motor had just a push-on connector like this, and the new one is modified. It's a little different. It has a actual round connector, and they provide this piece of rubber hose. You put that on that, and then on the PVC, and then you put hose clamps to hold it on. They provide a new washer with the new motor, so there's an old one in here. You can just dig that out. And put the new one in. So you put your little rubber hose on the end of the fan motor, put the two C-clamps in place, and then you gotta work it up onto your PVC pipe. Screw your motor back in, tighten your hose clamps, Take this screw back out because you forgot to put the green ground wire under it and screw it back in. Hook up the motor wires to those connector wires you put in. Make sure you get your white to white and black to black. Hook your hose back up. Turn your furnace back on. And that's what it should sound like. This is the gas valve and it should make a nice click sound when it comes on. Once the exhaust fan gets up to speed, you can look in this little window right here and see the igniter glow red hot. After that, the gas should turn on. If you don't see roaring flames in the window within about 15 seconds after you see the igniter glow, then most likely this gas solenoid is broken. If you want to verify before you replace the part, you'll need to peel back these four wires and put a voltmeter across them. The white wire is common and you should get 24 volts from the black wire which is the source wire and from the blue wire which goes back to this pressure detector right here and I'm getting the proper voltages but this thing is not kicking on so it's bad I'm gonna replace it. You need to turn off the gas and then disconnect this union here. Now unscrew the gas pipes to the bad valve. And pull off all the other wires and hoses. And finally unscrew the bad valve. This is yellow Teflon tape for gas pipes. Wrap it four or five times tightly around the end of this pipe and tear it off. Screw your new gas solenoid back onto the pipe and tighten it down with a wrench. Luckily they provided a new cable with the solenoid because I cut slots out of the old one to test it. Connect all your other wires and pipes back in. Connect your union back up, tighten it with a wrench and turn on the gas. As soon as you turn on the gas, spray or drip soapy water onto all your joints to make sure you have no gas leaks. Also double check by smelling each of the joints carefully for gas. A broken blower motor might have a grinding sound like this. To work on the blower we're going to need to pull it out so turn off the power and then disconnect all the electrical wires. Here's the main power, the power to the exhaust fan and the two neutrals that go with that. Here's the bundle that goes up to the igniter, gas valve, and pressure switch. And these four wires go out to the thermostat. You also have to take out this connector right here. Now we just need to unbolt it here and here. And now the whole blower just pulls right out. Blower motors usually only last seven to ten years and so will have to be eventually replaced. Start on the side without the motor. We need to loosen this bolt to get the blower off the shaft. 
Now flip to the motor side and start by removing one, two, three mounting bolts. This frees the motor mount and usually the tricky part is getting the shaft out of the blower fan. We'll try simply jerking upwards. If you're having trouble you can spray a little WD-40 on the shaft. I was going to suggest you turn the unit on the side and tap on the shaft with the hammer but my motor just fell out. Loosen this nut and pull off this mounting bracket. Look at your motor label and write down three important things. This is 115 volts, 3 quarter horse, and 1075 RPM. I found a replacement at a local HVAC shop for $200, but ended up getting this one for $85 on Amazon. Now we look at the wiring diagram on the new motor. We want counterclockwise rotation because we're blowing air counterclockwise and out that way so the yellow and purple wires are connected directly to each other and that's how it came in the box because that's the most common configuration here it shows the two brown wires go to the capacitor so they just push on like this our common is still white, black is still high, blue is still medium and they have a low which is red and we won't use that one these capacitors are usually interchangeable, but since we got a new one, let's pull the old one out. By the way, don't touch across there and put the new one in. Since we're not using the red wire, let's snip off the raw end and throw a wire nut on it to protect it. Drop the bracket onto the new motor and tighten it down with a wrench. Now put the shaft down in that hole and put your three mounting bolts back in there, there, and there. Now you need to pull this fan in or out on the shaft so that it spins without rubbing the sides of the casing. And then also line up the flat on the shaft right here with this nut and tighten it down. Slide the blower back in. Put in your bolts and wires. Turn your power back on. And that's what a blower should sound like. Unfortunately, I also have a bad circuit board, and you can tell if you listen. The solenoid that controls the blower motor is clicking erratically, so I'm going to need to replace it. I found the part number to the board right here and ordered another one. Now with the power off, I'm simply going to move all the wires over from that board to this board one at a time so I don't confuse any of them. All my wires that went under the screw down lugs here were pretty corroded so I cut off about an inch or so and stripped back the insulation so I could have a nice clean wire to put under the screws. With all the wires switched over I'll simply unscrew the old board and screw in the new one. Thank you for watching and good luck fixing your gas furnace.